Hello, I'm Armando Cuervo. I'm your friendly neighborhood Toastmaster, Dungeon Master, Gentleman Gamer, Kung Fu Martial Artist, and an enthusiast of wrestling, anime, Asian dramas, and other geeky stuff. And I welcome you to Gentlemen of Action. And this is week number three, yes, number three, of the Gentlemen of Business series, where I cover the building of my brand, Gentlemen of Action. On this series, we cover current projects, business topics, current events, future ideas, as well as fun stuff, among other things. And in this week, we're going to be talking about building an emergency fund. So let's get started. This week on Weekly Updates, I'm currently trying to finish the final outlines for course number six on body language, which is part of my public speaking series on Skillshare.com. And I spoke about this last week. Now today's Memorial Day, so I have plenty of time to shoot these videos in order to upload for my weekly series, and I'm going to use tonight to continue finishing the outlines for my body language course. Uh, I've also started planning courses number 7 through 10, and yes, I know the normal process is to finish one project at a time, but when you're creating courses in this fashion, you need to do a lot of initial planning in order to make sure that there's a lot of structure with the courses because failing to plan is a plan to fail and fortunately there's more than enough material in public speaking there's just a lack of structure or at least that's what I noticed with other instructors in addition I recently bought a BY M1 Boya mic now this is a lapel mic that I bought on Amazon it cost me roughly about I think $19 I got it pretty well but it was really highly rated by other content creators and this is going to be used in an attempt to have better audio or in the very least save me a few steps in the editing process because at the moment with my internal mic on my camera it doesn't quite produce the best audio it, because it takes in way too much background and ambient noise so currently what I do is use a separate system rather or program called audacity which is used a lot for podcasting and what i use is a a microphone that's usually used for podcasting which is called a blue snowball and what i do with this blue snowball is i record it i sync it up to the videos that i'm getting right now and then i edit it from there now this takes an additional one two hours per video and when i'm doing a course we're talking upwards to about three or four additional hours of labor. But fortunately, if this works out the way it does, I can save myself a whole lot of time per video, which means I can generate more content. This week on What's Happening Now, Broward County opened last week. And in this week, we're going to be reopening gyms and fitness centers. Because seriously, I need to get my fitness on and remain sexy for all these videos that I'm doing for you. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. And my Kung Fu school, on a personal level, is going to be opening on June 1st. So one whole week from now, which I'm excited as can be. Because my life is a lot closer to normal than where it was about mid-March. And in recent business news, you probably heard about Naaman Marcus and J. Crew declaring Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Well, now J.C. Penney is going to be joining them too. Now this will of course lead to store closures and a whole lot of job losses by all three of these retailers. And per Yahoo News, JCPenney is closing approximately 242 of their 846 stores permanently, which uh, by my quick maths, that's about 30% of all their stores that are currently in existence. So I will give to you that this is not exactly big news because it's been obvious to us for several years or probably now going on to decades that retail sales with brick and mortar stores has been declining for a very long time. And yes, we have a lot of online options to buy stuff online and we never technically have to go outside and wear pants because I'm not sure about you, but I hate wearing pants. And I believe that all these companies that forced me to wear pants, by the way, were close to bankruptcy and probably at most had about five years before they were going to the court of bankruptcy. It's just that the recent pandemics made it where it was expedited several fold. Now it's very sad that many will be losing their jobs and that this company or these companies technically failed. But remember, these are retailers that are going into chapter 11 bankruptcy, meaning 
that they will continue to exist. It's just that they will have to be restructured, reduced in size, and then given the opportunity to improve themselves in order to be profitable and potentially fill in a new void or gap or something in the market to distinguish themselves from everybody else. But when it comes to physical retail, unless you have a niche that's really, really specific, you're probably gonna be on the decline. So I think that we should all look to what is the next big thing because physical brick and mortar retail has been going down with the inventions of eBay and Amazon. And hopefully we'll find what the next big thing is and hopefully that next big thing will not be just eBay and Amazon, but potentially the next eBay and Amazon. That's just my take. Anyway, on to some fun stuff. On Tuesday night, I finished a series called Are You Human 2, which was a Korean drama about a mother and her son who were separated by an evil father-in-law who is the chairman of an automobile company. So when they were separated, the mother, being a good mother as she is, decided to create a robot who looks just like her son, whose name's Shin Nam, because that's what all distraught mothers do. And the story, after she created the robot, revolves around the robot, who's now called Shin Nam 3, who was the third iteration of this son, who she missed so much, has to take on the identity of the original Shin after the original Shin left Korea in order to find his mother in the Czech Republic and was involved in an auto accident. Now, I know this sounds a little zany, but it wouldn't be a Korean drama if it didn't have a lot of twists and turns like this. And it's actually a very good murder mystery, as well as a romantic comedy, because Shin Nam 3 starts to develop human traits and eventually falls in love with a female bodyguard who the original Shin fired because this bodyguard was leaking scandalous photos to the news press in order to make extra money. And then she had to leave in disgrace. And this again sounds crazy, but it actually works out pretty well. Now the supporting characters in this show are amazing and the main antagonists are even better because as you know, a, when a villain is great is when the villains are so good at their roles that you actually hate them. That's why in professional wrestling, a heel is always much more effective than a face, meaning that the villains are better than the heroes. And this is why Batman is also so popular because Batman is more known for his villains as opposed to being Batman, even though Batman is amazing. Now this show is obviously a good eight or nine out of 10 because it is a romantic comedy and this romantic comedy will have sappy guys like me saying all and being all squishy inside. But this is also a drama and murder mystery, which those aspects will have you binge watching it throughout the show. Now, the producers of this show are masters. I'm talking about top-notch masters of the cliffhanger because the end of every episode leaves you with a cliffhanger which always made me want to see the first five minutes of the following episode to make sure what in the world was going on. Now, now that I'm done with this uh, drama, I'm looking to devote my interest to something else because I couldn't find a good drama that caught my eye right away. So of all things, I decided to start watching more anime and I finished up My Hero Academia for the season and I stumbled onto Naruto, of all things, because as weird as it sounds, I never watched Naruto when I was uh, in college, when it came out. So I decided to just start watching that, maybe two or three episodes a day, and then eventually get into more books. So I recently ordered a new book, which I'll be talking about in future episodes. As for manly recommendations, last week I recommended that you learn the basics of money as well as get basic financial education into your knowledge pool. But rather than tell you to read more books or listen to random guys on YouTube like myself or on social media, I'm gonna tell you instead to focus on starting an emergency fund. Now, depending on when you are watching this, you probably already lived through a loss of job, a broken car, an economic crash, or even a global pandemic. And regardless of whatever event that you lived through, it's probably now more than ever that your eyes have opened to the need of an emergency fund. 
Now, the Federal Reserve conducted a study back in 2019 that found that approximately 40% of Americans do not have $400 in reserves to cover an emergency. Basically, if you have an emergency right now, you'll probably use your credit card or look to pawn something or sell something in order to cover the expense or potentially ask family members or friends for the funds. Now, these same financial experts are also indicating that you should have about six months worth of expenses in cash reserves. And I'll be the first to tell you that this does seem near impossible, especially if you are at zero right now. But only because it's difficult, it doesn't mean that you should not at least try. So let's start with a simple obtainable amount or goal of $500 to start. So for the next month, try to save $500 so you can have your emergency fund. And don't say, Armando, I don't make enough. And stop being a sissy nanny for a second. I'm just gonna tell you, take responsibility for yourself. Anyone can say, I don't make enough. Cause last time I checked, everyone says they don't make enough. And what they do is just quit or give up because to them, they told themselves, I don't make enough, so why even try? So I'm gonna tell you to try and just change your mindset. If you need to, work a few hours overtime to get that emergency fund. Get, the, get a second job for a while so then you can make some extra money to have the emergency fund and then some. Sell something on eBay until you get that emergency fund. Or you know what? Just budget it out of your current expenses. If you eat out three or four times a week, bring that down to one time a week. Or you know what else? Actually, just bring it down to zero times a week. You should not be getting an, an extra McChicken, an extra taco, an extra side of fries, or a cup of coffee, or ordering Chinese unless you have that emergency fund at the ready. The only reason why I can do some of those things is because I budgeted out. And I'm telling you, discipline yourself to budget it out and make it work. Because if you don't make these small sacrifices now, you're not gonna make the sacrifices when it's really important. And I know some of us have credit cards to handle these type of emergencies. And remember, credit cards are not wealth. Credit cards are not money. They're debt. And they're debts that come with an APR of about 15 to 29%. Now, I know I'm badgering you just a bit, but this is what I'm trying to say. The whole idea of an emergency fund is not so you can be rich. It's not what we call FU money. FU money will eventually come. But FU money comes with some sacrifices at the very beginning to make it all work. What you're looking for is what is I'm going to call peace of mind money, which is a peace of mind of knowing that you are ready for sudden emergencies. Speaking of money, time for some shameless marketing. When you finally get your emergency fund set up, you should follow that up by saving some money so you can start investing. If you wish to try investing in the stock market but not lose your shirt and fees, I recommend that you use my affiliate, Webull. Now, Webull is the stock trading app that I personally use to participate in the stock market. If you use my affiliate link below, you and I can both get a couple of the free stocks after you register and make your first deposit of at least $100. Now, on a side note, you should definitely do this Webull account after you set up your emergency fund. Wouldn't want to put you in a bad spot, by the way. And remember that there's a level of risk any time that you do investing and you're not always guaranteed to make money, you may occasionally even lose money. But real wealth requires risk and due diligence. So I wish you a lot of luck, and of course, always do your research prior to making any type of investment. I started a Webull account earlier this year with my first $100, and I am really happy with it so far. So I hope that you like it too. And that is the Gentleman of Business wrap up for this week. Remember to start saving those first $500 so you can be ready in an emergency. And I'm fully aware that $500 is not world changing money, but you do need to start somewhere. And if there's a business or improvement topic that you'd like to be mentioned or discussed, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Also, if you like what I do around here, please give me a like, a subscribe, and feel free to comment. And if you want to support me, please check out the description below on more info on how to do just that. And I'll see you in the next video.